I was reading an article a while back in the magazine The Christian Century. The article was written by Philip Carey, who's a professor at Eastern University. And there was one line that struck me. I think it's an interesting line, but it didn't sound like a professor kind of line to me. He said, A boatload of anxieties is tied up with the notion of finding God's will. I hadn't thought of the term boatload with a professor. But what an interesting phrase. A boatload of anxieties is tied up with the notion of finding God's will. Professor Carey talked about his students and the anxiety created in their lives as they tried hard time and time again to determine if they were following God's will or not. Were they choosing the right career path? Were they choosing the right spouse, the person God wanted for them? Which, as an aside, there's a whole website to answer that question. It's called christianmingle.com. Finding the person God wants for you. But these students really, they were really focused on, were they choosing what God wanted for them? Were their lives in line with God's will? So much so that it was down to the minute details of their lives. And it created this anxiety that almost got to the point where they couldn't really function. They had a hard time making decisions because was it God's will or was it not God's will? And they got to the point where they were almost trapped by their own anxieties. Carey argued that God's will isn't really about those decisions. God doesn't care what we had for breakfast in the morning, or if we choose a blue car or a silver car. God's will isn't tied up in those kinds of details of our lives. Carey said, Once again, the how do you know question is a sign that something's wrong. If you're looking for a formula or method for making decisions, then you're looking for the wrong thing. There's no recipe. There is only wisdom, the heart's intelligent skill at discerning good decisions from bad ones. The skill is not a method, not a formula you can apply to particular situations simply by following the rules, but a habit of the heart you have to develop through long experience of your own which includes making mistakes from time to time. The concept of wisdom is what every method for finding God's will leaves out of the decision-making process. It's left out precisely because, excuse me, it's left out precisely because the project of finding God's will is an attempt to guarantee that you won't make mistakes. All such guarantees are falsehoods, attempts to short-circuit the hard work of acquiring wisdom. This notion of freedom and God's will can at times seem to be in conflict with each other. Professor Carey's students were trapped in a fear that their lives wouldn't align with God's will. So trapped, in fact, that they lived in constant anxiety. So trapped that they lived afraid to make a mistake that they double-questioned, triple-questioned every decision they were making, so trapped that they failed to live the abundant life. They were trapped. I'm wondering if you've ever felt that way, trapped by a fear, an anxiety, doubt, trapped in grief or addiction, There are things that can trap us, any number of things. And and then this longing for freedom takes on a new meaning. Our clip from Monsters, Inc. was meant to be a humorous example of this. Mike and Soli were trapped in their fear of this child, this little child that to us seemed pretty harmless, but to them they thought presented great danger. And they were so consumed by this fear that every action focused on that fear. They were consumed by it. They were overwhelmed by it. Every decision was trying to avoid her or to hide her. Our lives can sometimes become consumed by anger or pain or grief or self-doubt or fear 
And instead of being grounded in God's love, we are actually grounded in whatever it is that has us trapped. Whether it's for a short period of time, or sometimes longer maybe than we'd like to admit. There are many scriptures that address freedom. That word freedom is used throughout the Old and New Testament quite a bit. There's one scripture I want to share. It's from the second letter to the community in Corinth. The Apostle Paul says this, But whenever anyone turns to our God, the veil is removed. Now our God is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of our God is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces reflect our God's glory grow brighter and brighter as we are being transformed into the image we reflect. This is the work of our God, who is spirit. Paul believed that we can find a sense of freedom when we turn to God. When we ground ourselves in God's spirit and allow that spirit to work within us, we find freedom. And with this freedom comes the ability to move through our grief or pain, to let go of our anger, to seek support and community as we strive together to find transformation. And it begins with unveiled faces. I loved that phrase, unveiled faces, with a willingness to unmask ourselves to reveal our true selves, our broken selves, our whole selves, unveiling of our faces. We can't begin to reflect the image of God if we are consumed by any of the things that hold us trapped inside ourselves. And freedom comes once we turn to God and decide it's time to let go to let go of the pain or the anger or the fear or the doubt, which we all know doesn't happen automatically just because we want it, doesn't make it an automatic thing, but it's that first step. It's the first step of claiming I'm no longer going to live trapped or consumed by the things that hold me back. I'm no longer going to live with a veiled face. I'm going to unmask myself to God. I'm going to choose the freedom that God gives. Free will, God's will. The idea of God's will has been debated for centuries, probably for millennial. What is God's will? And I, I decided some years ago that there's one scripture that basically sums up God's will for me. And if I can align my life with that, then perhaps I'm doing the best job I can. It's a scripture you may be familiar with from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's God's will for me. Loving God, loving others, and loving ourselves. Living into that call. Making decisions based on that. The interesting thing is we often focus on the first two parts of that loving God and loving others. But I think the last part, the loving ourself, is just as important. And loving ourselves comes when we choose to work through whatever it is that holds us back or keeps us trapped, no matter how hard. When we choose forgiveness, we are loving ourselves. When we let go of anger or resentment, we are loving ourselves. When we turn to God with unveiled faces, we are loving ourselves and perhaps loving God. I've come to think that free will is perhaps the greatest gift and the greatest responsibility that we have as humans. Because it allows us to participate in God's creation, to make the world what we want it to be, or even the corner of our world. With free will, we choose a relationship with God. And with free will, we choose how to treat others, how to be in relationship 
with others. We choose to be co-creators with God. When we accept the freedom God gives us, it then leads us into the community. If you think back to our movie, To Monsters, Inc., Mike and Soli were trapped in that fear, and it wasn't until they let go of their fear that they could find a new way of being, a new community. They could learn things about the child and about the world that they didn't think was possible. It was no longer about fear of the unknown. Rather, they found a new sense of joy and hope and love. They found abundant life. When they let go of that which held them back, they found a new way of living. Let's watch. Laughter is more powerful than scream. Joy is more powerful than fear. What has you trapped? Are you ready to accept the freedom found in God's love and spirit? What would it look like to live free? Amen.